Welcome to the Floor Academy Podcast. I'm your host, Kyle Hedin, owner of Illustrious Hardwoods in Phoenix, Arizona. We are here to talk with flooring professionals from all across the country about the issues that matter to you. This week's guest is Luke Miller. Luke owned and operated Miller Tile for years before moving on to start the Tile Money Podcast. Miller Tile was originally started in 2008 and short-lived because of the Great Recession. Find out what mistakes Luke made back then and how we can learn from them to come out on top riding the wave from the latest financial woes this country is experiencing. Luke Miller, are you on the line? Hey, yes, I am. I'm here. How are you, Kyle? I'm good. Welcome to the Floor Academy podcast. It's great to have you on, a fellow podcaster. And uh, I'm, I'm excited about this, uh, to be honest. Right on. Me too. I We've been meaning to do this. We played, uh, you know, kind of some cal- calendar back and forth uh, trying to get this to happen. So I'm, I'm glad to make it happen. That is correct, Th- man. Thank Schedu- you. Oh, thank my you. pleasure, dude. It, schedules are tough, especially when I—I I don't know how you were like just making these is hard enough, and then to add another business on top of it. So, yeah, it's it's tough to get things worked out. But uh, for those of you that don't know, Luke runs uh, the Tile Money Podcast. Don't be afraid of the word tile in the name. I don't care what kind of flooring you install. Go check him out and you will greatly benefit from all the advice that are on his episodes. Um, but Luke, why don't you go ahead, introduce yourself, give us a little background, how you how you got started, where you have been and, and where you're going now. Right on. And thank you for the for the mention of the Tile Money podcast. I appreciate that. Um, and I did, I did start that about a, about a year and a half ago. And the reason I started it is, is my background, um, is, is the ceramic tile industry. I got started in it at 17 in Tucson, Arizona, and I started working, uh, predominantly floors, uh, but we, we specialized in only ceramic tile and, uh, we were doing track homes and in Arizona, uh, it, well, as you know, Kyle, oh, yeah. they, they put a lot of hard flooring in, um, in the home, you know, so we would do a lot of, a lot of full house, you know, jobs. Um, and we did, we did some showers as well. And, uh, I was, I was fortunate to have a master, um, teacher and he taught me, you know, layout, you know, critical layouts. Uh, he taught me, uh, you know, I don't know if they do this up in Phoenix, but in Tucson, they were doing, uh, in track homes they were doing back then, they were doing the baseboards and then we would come in and install the tile cut to the baseboard is that a thing in phoenix that is still the way they do it it drives me nuts especially because they hard grout it and it doesn't meet standards and it we always have tenting issues it looks like garbage you can't replace the baseboards don't get uh, like dude that's a whole podcast in and of itself just to hear me complain about it it's it's a wild thing and i've actually mentioned it in some of the groups and people are like what the heck and you know, for track homes, it's, it, I guess it saves the builders time. And, um, but one good thing about it is I got really good at making accurate cuts and even scribing to, uh, these baseboards, you know, mm-hmm. around doors and stuff, um, and using some scribe tools and stuff like that. So, so that is the one good thing is I did have a good teacher and I had a good base and we, uh, we would grid up floors and, and set 12 by 12s. Of course, you know, three sixteenths uh, spacers and you could do all that without without spacers. Even um, you could just do the, the, the box grids and uh, and pretty much knock out a house. Three three setters could knock out, you know, like a thousand feet in a day. And that's the way that's the way I was brought up. Quick and dirty. Quick and dirty. Quick and, and um... dirty. That's that tracked home <laughs> style, man. No quality. All all speed. You know, it, it's true. It's true. And um, like I say, though, I was fortunate, you know, looking back, um, we we were one of the more, you know, we paid attention to quality. Mm-hmm. Um, and my boss had a, a really good reputation. And, and over the years, we I, I saw him get more and more into custom homes. Uh, he did know how to float, do some float mud work. So we were travertine was huge back then. Is it is it still big in Arizona? Uh, it's got its places. I mean, I just yeah. pulled some out the other day. So we would float showers and do a lot of travertine showers and, and stuff like that in custom homes. So I kind of had a good mix um, upbringing. And from there, I, 
I ended up in New York City and was working on, you know, a larger crew, larger, uh, larger projects and, and got to work with people all over the world. Italy, uh, there was uh, Australia, you know, just it, just about any country. Um, so I really feel blessed to have that that background in those first five or six years, really um, a good uh, you know, a good introduction and uh, apprenticeship to the tile industry. And from there, I moved out to California and eventually got my, my C54 tile, ceramic tile license in the state of California. Okay. So what, what year was that? And that, so that was in, uh, in 2008. And 2008 was a pivotal year for me. I, I got married. I moved down to Monterey from Santa Cruz, where I was living. And I, like I said, I received my, my C54 license and started a business. It was also the year that we will credit the Great Recession started. So, yeah. so early, early 2008, there was a lot going on. And I, uh, I, w- I was about 25 at the time. So I had been in the game, you know, about eight years. Uh, and, and I felt, I, felt um, I, I knew what to do. I knew how to install tile. Mm-hmm. I knew how to build showers. Uh, but my business never took off, and I really struggled. And I actually got into another industry for a while until after until about 2012 um, you never really can escape the tile or flooring industry everybody <laughs> hears you know how to do it and you, so you always have like part-time weekend work and stuff like that so I always kept you know some tools the basic tools and I would I would do you know every month it seems I would have a job so I never really left completely but for four or five years I was I was uh, my license was inactive and I wasn't really pursuing that okay well, I mean, you've obviously you've moved on, and and you've, I I know that you went on to to start doing tile again, and you you then had some different dreams and wanted to travel the country, and that's kind of where the the tile money podcast came from, and that's allowed you to free up your schedule and and have you move about a little bit. Um, what I'm kind of interested in though, because there's there's going to be some similarities, is. In 2008, you you got your license, but you put it on hold and you you pursued another venture. And not that we are in a. Oh, gosh. I, OK, fine. We're in a recession. Like no matter what this 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 COVID-19 event has, has created a, a hopefully it is a blip in the grand scheme of things, but no one knows how it's going to play out. So we'll just say we're in a recession. There's going to sure. be some similarities between. 2008 and now and any other recession that we've experienced so what experiences did you have in 2008 that made you say i can't do this i need to stop but if you would know what you knew now how would you have kicked butt in 2008 and come out on the other side even bigger yeah, great question, and I believe it would have it would have been uh, entirely possible if, if a couple things were different. So, um, one thing in two thousand eight, you know, I was younger, and my mind my mind was uh, more fragile, uh, if, if you will. I, I had a lot of a lot more head trash than I than I have today, um, and I didn't believe in myself. I the number one thing, the number one problem was I, I lacked confidence in my ability, even mm-hmm. though. You know, I had, I had accomplished jobs, you know, my, my employers, um, up to that point would send me on jobs by myself. I had a truck, I had tools and I had the skill and they, you know, they would let me, you know, start and finish, you know, nice jobs yeah. on my own. And, they, and, 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 and so I could do it, but I lacked, it, it was my head trash. You know, I lacked the confidence and I thought, Oh, what, you know, what do I do in case this, and all these scenarios would run through my head and I would get scared. And then, and it would affect my ability to sell myself because something kind of interesting happened in in 2008. Um, You know, the yellow book, as soon as you get your license in a a state, they they typically sell your number to just about every (laughs) Tom, Dick and Harry. And the the yellow books, the yellow book salespeople would come around and say, do you want to be in the yellow book? And they want like, you know, six grand a year or something like that. And so I had, I didn't have a penny to my name. So I started getting on the internet and I, I found this thing called Google and, and it was, you know, before Google was King. Um, and I, I, I thought I saw this thing called Google ads and I thought, well, that's, that's worth a shot because it was like 50 cents a day yeah. to run your ad. Wow, Something so cheap crazy. Then. Oh, it was so cheap. 
And I thought, you know what, I'll put 10 bucks to it. So I actually, you know, within a day, my phone started ringing because nobody was using Google ads in 2008. It was, it was like a brand new thing. So my phone actually started ringing and I was actually running around, you know, doing estimates, but I had zero sales skills. So what I should have been doing it is uh, brushing up on my sales game and, and my confidence and my, my uh, you know, I, basically those two things because my marketing was already working. Um, what little marketing I was doing was mm -hmm. actually working for somebody brand new to an area, brand new in the trade. I was getting a few calls a week. I mean, that's pretty darn good for, you know, for a 25 year old contractor who's just newly licensed. So, you know, I would say, Focus on sales, focus on presentation and speak with confidence and confidence and sell those jobs. Because when I would show up, I, I would fumble through my presentation and my words and, and they would say, this guy is this guy is not going to do the job. And, then, you know, and it would be so the sales, that presentation is, is more important than your skill. I, you know what? No, you're 100 percent right. Um, having been in it for two and a half years on my own now. I never really did a lot of jobs on my own with my first two and a half years of experience. Um, I was always with somebody else. I did some stuff on weekends here and there. I'd, I'd land a little project and it would be like a room or something. So sure, I can go and do a room on my own. That's no big deal. But really, when I went out on my own and I started doing complete, you know, levels of a house and, and stairs on my own and stuff, I would I, I'd have cold sweats all night before I'd go to the project. Like I knew I could yeah. do it, but that wasn't, yeah. it was, Oh my gosh, I got to do it all myself. And am I going to do it right? And am I going to run into a problem? Cause it, we both know, and, and everybody listening knows like there's problems you'll run into once in a career, once, once every five years, you just, you, but when you have no experience, you got to overcome it. And then trying to go and sell the jobs. Like you said, I think I lost more jobs I chased more jobs my first year than my second year for sure, but I probably lost more jobs my first year because I didn't know how to go in with confidence and, and sell. And so th those skills are huge. Just being confident in yourself and your abilities to know that you're going to be able to go and do the job yeah. well and stand in front of that potential client and say, I'm the guy for you we're going to nail this and knock it out of the ballpark. And you're going to be happier with me than anyone else you can choose. Yeah. yeah. But where did you go to, to find those skills though? Where do we, where do we get these, these sales skills, these marketing skills so well, that we can overcome that? The, the first thing, you know, I would say is um, if, if you're like me, you, you have a skewed view of, of salespeople or the, or the, the term, you know, nobody likes the term sales, salesperson or yeah. sales. But the fact of the matter is if you hang, if you hang your, your name out, if you're, if you go into business for yourself, you are now um, the number one salesperson for that business. So, and, and so changing your mindset from maybe the car salesman that you don't want to talk to, or even if you go to buy, if you go to Gap or wherever you buy your shirts, um, you know, someone comes up to us and says, do do you want help? And, and our immediate reaction is, no, I'm going to figure it out. But the fact is we went to that store or that car lot to get to, to get something that we don't know that much about. So that salesperson could actually help us. So, so change your mindset to be helping people. And so if you start to view yourself as just helping people get what they want, look, they're calling you for a floor, help them get it and help them get it, get a good floor, you know, and that's yeah. why you're there. So, once you shift that mindset, everything kind of changes and you're just having a conversation about the best way to install a floor and the best product for that for that individual. No, totally. Um, you know, I had early on, I read a book and it defined customer and it defined client. And one way I overcame that whole like I'm a salesperson thing is that I now call everyone a client because a customer is there yeah. to just get a good or a service like, yeah. And it, it's a it's a really easy transaction. You exchange something really quickly, and they're and they're gone. But a client yeah. is someone that's under your protection. And so, if I am their trusted guide through this process, and I'm going to protect them 
from any bad thing that can happen, then I'm not a scummy salesperson. Yeah. I I am a, a trusted advisor, and that's a much better place to put yourself mentally than trying to think feel like you know you're the scummy used car salesman. <laughs> yeah. So, where did where I mean, you're, you're looking for it, but where did you at? Where did you find some of it? Did you find like books or podcasts? Yeah, um, yeah great classes? question. Great question. I didn't I didn't really take any classes. What I found is um, is podcasts, believe it or not, and and audiobooks because I found the ability to listen while I was doing just about anything else, whether it was a walk with my with, with my newborn daughter you know who who i would carry on my back or, or in front of me mm-hmm. and i could just pop in those pot you know pop those earbuds and start listening to podcasts interviews like this one and and, and then audiobooks as well and uh and also the facebook groups were were a, were a good help um I, I found a, you know, I, I went searching for any sales book, you know, sales groups, any sort of trade industry groups, and I just started asking questions and networking, um, and that's that's really how I started to make improvements. And it was the improvements; it was just a few slight changes in the way I was doing things, and most of it came from podcasts. And that's why, that's why I got so jazzed on podcasts, and that's what kind of brought me to starting Tile Money because at the time I couldn't find a, a ceramic tile industry podcast, so that's that's why I did that. I, yeah. Um, that was my problem is I'm not a tile guy. And yeah. when I went looking for flooring podcasts, I typed in wood, I typed in floor, I typed in laminate. I couldn't find anything, but yeah. Yeah. then I was exposed to actually our, our buddy, uh, Jesse Boswell was like, well, here, I listen to this guy. It's tile money. Like you listen to this. And I was like, oh, this is amazing. But it was I never okay. would have thought to look for tile because I'm not a tile guy. <laughs> right, so, right. You may want to work on some keywords there, but <laughs> Yeah, yeah. Floor, the flooring industry is huge. And uh, I had that, a great conversation with Ken Bal Valen in uh, in Vegas and I you know, I, I, I never you know, like I said, I've never done carpet, wood, uh vinyl, any any of that stuff, just um just because it never it, you know, I never had the opportunity. And then after a certain point, you just kind of stick with what you know. And nope. I, um, I know Ken like does a lot of showers and stuff. And I said, well, why, why do you market yourself as a flooring guy? And he said, well, frankly, cause the industry's bigger. <laughs> yeah. Well, and so. you got to think like people don't generally put, uh, well, I mean, I guess if you're specifically looking for like a shower remodel, you would look for like shower remodel or shower contract or something like that. But yeah, I, I, there's more searches for flooring than there are showers, probably. Sure. Yeah. So yeah. It, it, sure. it definitely makes sense. So you need to pay attention to where you're putting your name out there, folks. Um, just have it, it's as much as like I've I've pigeonholed myself because my company name is now Illustrious Hardwoods. And mm. so that's, you know, could I change it to like Illustrious Hardwoods and more? Sure. But yeah. had I gone with like illustrious flooring, it gives me more options in the future. Like if I want yeah. to open a store and start carrying carpet and tile, it now makes a little more sense than trying to get people into a hardwood store that has carpet and tile as well. So yeah. um another good tip. Um Great tip. don't you act you uh well you learned this one because you were Miller Tile, correct? I yeah, I was Miller Tile yeah. and um I struggled to come up with a name, uh, and uh, at one point, about a, about a couple years in, I was I was making I had good clients, and I, I was going to change my name. And uh, somebody said, "You can't do it. Now. You can't do it now." What you could, you could, you, could. you know, a couple years into it, you know, you, you definitely can change your name. But um, I stuck with Miller Tile, and uh, you know, again, you know, it, it limits your your possibilities. Um, I think it also depends. You know, I was in a, a little bit of a smaller community, so I think you know there is some value maybe to putting your name in, the, in your business name. I don't know. It, we could debate that one for a whole podcast episode. Again. Oh, definitely. <laughs> well, I know you you had a. It was either just a question in your group, or it was maybe you covered it in an episode too. I think when you went to sell, when, once you started up the podcast full oh, time sure, and you hopped sure. in the RV. 
I know that that decision affected what you were able to do because what yeah. are the chances you're going to sell it to another miller? And so exactly, yeah. Theoretically speaking, businesses without a personal name attached should command a higher value. Exactly. If you go to sell, so definitely if you're in the early stages, um, think think food large. For yeah, think think really big. I dare you to think really big when you're thinking about your vision for your business. Think. You know, think, don't worry about the years or, or whatever. Think as big as you can. Dream big. Dream that you will build a legacy that, that will be worth a uh, million dollars, you know, uh, in, a, in, a, in a time period. Uh, it doesn't matter what time period, you know. Um, but don't, don't get too caught up on the details. Just dream big, folks, because, you know, that's, that's the only way you're going to get there is if you start out with that big vision, that big, that big dream. Yes. And you never, you never know where it's going to take you. Don't don't just go out on your own and yeah, it's just going to be me and and, a, and an apprentice. And as long as I can pay my bills, it's it's OK. From the very beginning, I was like, I want three to five crews, if not more, a couple stores, salespeople, uh, per, uh, you know, like a foreman to run around a job, someone doing delivery, someone running a warehouse. I'm going to do cash and carries. A and people look at me and they're like, you're crazy. Like, you can't build that. And then. Because I tell everybody I'm going to build that and it's going to be an income generating stream for me and I'm going to be in Tijuana on the beach having drinks. And they right, look at me like right. I'm crazy. It's not crazy. <laughs> Go talk with Jason Goldberg. Like yeah, he's built exactly. an amazing flooring company. And if he needed to put a couple more people in place to step away from it, he could do it. Yeah. And there's going to be like, I don't want to see anybody lose their business. Not anyone. That sucks. Yeah. I don't want to see anyone lose their home. But reality is this situation has some people in really tough positions. And if it yeah. continues to keep us in our homes and we're not able to go out and get work, you're going to see people lose homes. You're going to see them pawn off their tools and their trucks and their trailers because they got to pay the bills. So there could be some very amazing opportunities for people that are flush with cash right now on the other side of this, whether you're able to pick up really good talent because they need a job, whether you're able to start a store because business is booming. Um, there's just there's going to be some really good opportunities on the other side of this. And so you need to be prepared. So what what other things do we need to be looking at, Luke, that you missed in 2008, 2009 when you had to like pivot and pick up a, a different business path? Yeah, yeah. So I think um, I, I, I think right now what you can be doing is uh, it, it, if you're at home, um, do as much research and study and as you can put learn learn you know learn who to call because when things start picking up and, and and get busy you know make relationships now make relationships with a bookkeeper you know nobody should be handling their own books and and if, if you want to learn you know get get yourself quickbooks online it's really easy it, it it tracks your bank automatically your your bookkeeper can you you know use it on their side and then you can just send it to the cpa at the end of the year so start acquiring these assets, these tools that, that you need to know. If you've been busy the last couple of years, you know, and you've been, you know, at the end of, if, if your, if your strategy is to bring a bunch of receipts to your CPA at the end of the year, or just guess or whatever, use this time wisely right now, because things will start picking back up. And then what's going to, like, if you're broke right now and, and you've been in business for over two or three years, that's a shame. I'm, I'm sorry. You know, if, if you're brand new, you know, a year or less, you know, it is what it is. Um, that, that's tough. Yeah, but yeah. If, if you've been in business three, four or five years and you're broke right now because you have you've only, you know, because of the covid. That means your business wasn't healthy. You, you didn't have enough money flowing in. That means you were you were busy and I know you were busy and everybody says being busy is great. But being busy can be the worst killer to a business because you're so busy that you drop the ball. And you don't realize there's no profit. There's no money in the bank. And that's what's happening to 90% of the contractors I speak with, 90% of the flooring guys, the tile guys, is is uh, you might think you're making 10 grand a month, but that's just money coming in and out. And you, you need to have, you know, as much 
uh, money set aside for these times. And the only way you're going to do that is to start thinking um, uh, proactive right now. Start start looking into ways that, uh, like, find people who are able to keep their employees busy right now and call them and text them and, and bug them and ask, you know, it's it, it, I say bug, but you're really not bugging them. You're really not. These, these folks, uh, you know, like Brad Denny, Dan Welch, uh, uh, other folks can you know in in the industry that have a bunch of employees mm-hmm. they're eager to help the younger guys they really are they're eager to help the younger people you know we have the ntca and the tile world um with with a with a vast amount of, of seasoned accomplished contractors who are actually keeping their guys um on payroll right now because they they know that when things pick up they need they need their workers they need their employees yeah, there's tons of guys. I don't care what part of the industry you're in. There is somebody that will mentor you. Do not be afraid to ask. The worst they're going to say is no. And honestly, we get no's all day, every day when we go and bid a job. Big deal. So People want to share their knowledge. Exactly. It makes them feel good. You want to give back. So you're yeah. you're actually you're doing them a favor. You're letting them feel good about themselves. Exactly. Exactly. Um you know, and then you're right. Hire a bookkeeper. It's it's one of the cheapest things you can do. Um, it's really not that much money. Go back and listen to. I just had my bookkeeper on within the last month, I think. So go back a couple episodes. Yeah. It's bookkeeping one hundred and one. Yeah. Listen to that. Luke had a CPA on early on. That's that's in his list of episodes somewhere. I'm trying to hook up with mine, but it is still the busy season because sure. they've changed oh, when yeah. taxes are due this year. Um, sure. <laughs> so. There, there. Go talk with those people, man. You're gonna make a lot of people think the money's made in the field. The money is not made in the field. The money is made at the books. Yeah, and I know you you're can absolutely testify right. to that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. What happened to me is, um, like I said, I, I started my business quick and dirty. It was in 2012, and I, I made, you know, I very quickly acquired four or five employees, um, and and I was I would have four or five jobs going at once with like three three installers and a couple you know, helpers, apprentices. Um, so I was very busy um, and there was a lot of money coming and going, but, but we had basically no savings. And um, what happened is after my daughter was born, all that changed. I, I said, this has to change. I, I need to be home for my daughter. I wanted to be home for my daughter mm-hmm. and, and my wife um, more, you know, cause I didn't want to work six days a week and six and a half days a week. Um, I did, I did hustle. When my wife got pregnant, I started working seven days a week. I will say this, and I and I saw the end in sight. Now I will say, stopping that train was not easy. It was not easy to go from seven days a week, five man crew, to uh, five days a week with a with a one man crew. But I, I made those changes because what, what I saw was um, not any profit. And for for all that headache and all that liability frankly, it's not worth it to, to make 50, 60 K a year. I, I could probably make that work for someone if yeah. I put my mind to it. So it's not worth it for 50, 60 K a year to be a business owner for all that headache and all that, um, liability. So what happened is I, I actually, like you said, I actually said after my daughter was born, I said, I'm going down to one employee who I could trust wholeheartedly on the job. And I said, I'm, I'm going to work. Um, I'm going to do the backsplashes and anything under like three, 400 feet I'll, I'll handle. And I'm going to put him on the showers and on the, on the larger jobs. We'll, we'll knock them off together. And I went down to like two days a week in the field and working two and a half, three days a week at home in the office. And what happened is that year, the, 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 that, you know, the following 12 months, I had the same amount of revenue as the, as the previous 12 months, but I was only one employee instead of four or five. And I, I was, uh, I had much more profit as you can imagine. Yeah. Um, I did, I did take a cut because I wasn't actually installing as much. So I, I opted for that, but I really wanted to be there for the first year of my daughter's life as much at home as possible. And that's what I did. So I, I worked in the office and that's where the money was made. It was incredible. I found all kinds of areas where I was just bleeding money and not collecting money and losing money here and there and everywhere. And so I made changes. I got in the office. A business owner has got to uh, spend at least 20% of his time in the office. So that's an eight-hour day per week. And I, look, you're going to hear it all the time. You have to know your numbers because you didn't start making that money until right. you actually learned what it cost you to be in the field, what it costs to have the employee in the field. what it, Absolutely. How long does it actually take to get the work done, you know? And 
Yeah. Once you understand that, you can adjust numbers because you, you, you ask these guys and you say, what do you need to make a day? I don't know, a couple hundred bucks. Yeah. All right. So let's say you make two, three hundred dollars. Cool. Take 40 percent off of that. How much you got left? Yeah. Now go yeah. pay your bills. I can't. Yeah. Well, maybe you don't need to make a couple hundred dollars then, huh? Like, oh, yeah, yeah. uh, so um, if we're if we're getting we're, we're getting in the office, we're learning our numbers, we're, we're seeing what we need to do so that we can have a profit. I, I don't think any guy that's out on his own should be making less than 100K in their pocket a year. They should be able to pay I all agree. their business expenses and they should be making very low six figures within I don't know, three years at the most, if not two, yeah. like the, yeah. your first year, I get it. You can struggle. You can kind of falter and, and you'll learn. Maybe you make 70, 80 K, but yeah. there's no reason a, a good installer, him and an apprentice shouldn't be doing a hundred K a year. Um, yeah. So we're going to, we're going to learn our numbers. We're going to, we're going to find a way to save some money that way because we actually have profit now we're, we're getting better at our marketing skills and our sales skills we're, we're getting classes where else are we going um you know uh find find your trade association you know for me it's the ntca and i i never understood the value inst- until um until i started understanding you know what actually happens and what actually happens is got to show up and start having these conversations in in real life and real person events like uh las vegas you know um different events uh, the flooring industry i know has was you know we were all together in las vegas you know mm-hmm. i saw you over there yeah and that's where you're really going to want to reach out to people try to find five five um people who are where you want to be and start to you know network with them on a regular basis and once you make that that handshake person to person connection. It's, it's easier to make that phone call and don't give up. Don't, you know, don't stop making those regular phone calls because they're going to be happy to help you happy to uh, assist you in that. And then um, as well as uh, what was I going to say? The groups, you know, the groups are great. Um, Mm -hmm. Start there, you know, find a mentor. You you can have many mentors, you know, many mentors, Um, try to find as many people to look up to, as you can and just follow follow what they're doing there's no there's no reason to reinvent the wheel here um it's all pretty much been done and can be can be repeated with success uh yeah i honestly i have more friends across the country now than i i thought i would ever have i interact with them more than anybody that's local to me (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> well, that's the, that's the key is interaction. You know, these these Facebook groups and Instagrams and, and, and all the social media can be a very depressing thing if you're not interacting because you're just what are you doing? You're just scrolling. Um, now, I will say if you're reading, like if you're reading on Facebook and, and things of that nature, you know, you're acquiring knowledge. But, you know, um, just be careful what what you're scrolling for. It can be a very negative thing if you let it and if you want it to be. Yes. And, uh, that's, that's a dangerous path to go down because there's a lot of, you know, there's a lot of knuckleheads out there. And, um, if you, if you, uh, um, entertain them, they will, you know, they will drain you of your energy. Yes. Well, and it's, uh, you'll learn who people are real quick. Once you get in the, the different online groups, there was, a post the other day that a picture was taken from one group posted in another group. And the guy was, was talking smack. Not that he didn't talk smack right in the original group, but he brought it to another one just to be like, haha, look at this, this, you know, why, Yeah. why do we need to do this? It's, it's not at all necessary. Why don't you send a message and say, Hey man, what happened on that job? Like this half of it looked really good. Like what happened on this second half? Did, did you run into something like why can't you offer advice and be, you know, constructive instead of just saying, oh, you suck. Like you're not doing anything good. Like why you want to put the. It, uh. I know I know a guy. <laughs> I know a guy and I'll say his name. I don't I don't think he'll be upset. And I, I think uh, if he is, that's fine. <laughs> no, but uh, Malcolm Campbell, uh, a great, a great guy, great business owner, a smart guy, really intelligent. I interviewed him um, about a year ago. Uh, if you want to go back, okay. or, you know, spring of 
of 18 or excuse me, 19, 2019. Um, Malcolm Campbell recently put a photo in, in, in one of the groups or a couple of the groups and, and he's over there in Ohio. And because, because we're in COVID-19 right now, he's in commercial work anyways. That's kind of his specialty. He does a little bit of custom construction, but or new construction, but okay. he's in commercial work predominantly. And he makes a, he, he runs a good business and, and has a great head on his shoulders. And so he threw a post up the other day of some pictures in a, in a, in a, 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 a grocery store who wanted a second bathroom because they, they wanted to stay open and I guess they needed to comply with the social distancing. So you open two bathrooms so you can, you know, continue the social distancing or whatever. Okay. You, you get the picture. Yep. So he was in a, it, it was a rush job, right? Well, he ran out of tile. And so he, he, he did some things with what he had. He used some scrap tile that he had in his shop and mixed it in with the, with the tile that was supposed to be there. But you know, things are different right now. And he, he made um, some Dutchman cuts above the doorway that did not the grout joints did not line up well a bunch of people tore into him and told him he was a hack and everything but hey you know instead of asking why if they had asked why he'd say well listen this is why it, it's a grocery store we had to get the bathroom done in two days we ran out of tile it, you know it's a quick job everything we did was by the book it's not aesthetically the the pleasing thing in the world but it's you know it's not going to affect anybody's grocery choices yeah so if you see something goofy, ask a question. You might learn something from a guy, from an intelligent guy like Malcolm. You might actually go away learning something if you see something that's not right. Instead of just bashing, you know, and saying, "Hey, that that sucks, man. You're you should be fired." Like Malcolm should not. You know, Malcolm is one of the premium, you know, guys that we all need to be learning from. Well, and then if you bash him, don't think he's not going to take notice of that. And when you post something asking for help in six months, he ain't helping you. Why would he want to help you? He wants you to. It, you don't have a yeah. place in this industry if that's going to be your attitude, in my opinion. What if you're not yeah. going to try and bring this entire industry up, and you're also the one complaining about how the rates are the same as the '70s or '80s, and this industry yeah. sucks yeah. and it's going nowhere? I don't want you in it, so I'm not going to help you because you yeah. showed me who you were. Don't do that. <laughs> Uh, uh, oh man all right <laughs> um so all right what now i'm all worked up i just want to go off about that i don't want to do that though <laughs> sorry about that no you're good no it's a it's a great example it, it really is yeah. especially yeah. when the guys that truly know what's going on and how they could help you I, I'm not kidding. They're not going to want to help you when they see that you're being an a hole. You're yeah, hurting. Yeah. You're hurting yourself, and that's that's the that's the sad thing. Um, trade organizations, the the meeting the people, the camaraderie. It, it's funny. It's a common theme, and it, it, we come back to that all the time on this show, on your show. Uh, it, it's everyone bashes getting certified or being involved with them. Yeah. Until they get involved and they meet people. Look, the Facebook groups are great. Don't get me wrong. I have enjoyed meeting many, many people. I When I went to surfaces and I was able to meet people in person, it changes everything. It changes how you and, feel about them. And, Go ahead. And just to expand on that, too, the other thing I, I forgot and I wanted to touch on was know your reps. And, and like, that's one of those things, like, know your numbers, know your reps. Like, what does that mean? What does that really mean? And, and I'll tell you what it means. And this is something I found out all too late. If I was going to start another company, I would immediately uh, make uh, relationships with, with all my reps because you can invite them to your job. You can have them write custom warranties. Like how awesome would it be if, if later Crete wrote me in which they will and, and, and are fully capable of a custom later Crete warranty for my job because I'm using their products and it has the, the client's name and address and, and all that, my business name on there. And it's, it's now, now it's not Miller tile and stone giving the warranty, which it is, but it's also um, a company that invented thin set. That's been around since the sixties that are giving them a warranty. And so that's the power. And that's what we mean when I say, know your reps is know what they can do for you and what, what they're happy to do for you. Yeah, 
I, I just had a Uzine rep out to help me do a pour in a master bedroom. And it exactly. was one, it was because I, I, I've lost my, my apprentice. He quit on me a couple weeks back. And so I didn't want to pour 17 bags by myself. That's tough. Yeah. <laughs> but yeah. two, yeah. I wanted to see what advice he had on pouring 17 bags by yourself so that I can do what it. <laughs> um, and, and it turned out great. We were a couple bags short and an edge ended up drying on us while we had to go buy some more bags. But um, okay. other than that, like it turned out super sweet. I'm really happy with it. I, I learned how to use the leveling pins and measure everything out and story stick a floor and use a larger bucket instead of lining up like 15 one gallon buckets and then trying to run through and pour them all and how to, yeah, I, I learned lots of stuff, but it was because I had somebody out that's been trained how to do it to give me the info. You know, I can sit there and play yeah. with that stuff all day long and only learn so much because I'm just, that's essentially what I'm doing is I'm playing with it until I screw it up five, six times. I'm not going to learn. Whereas this guy was able to go and learn from the company itself, from people that have been doing it for a long time. And he already has this knowledge and they sat there and gave him the wisdom so that he can skip those five, six, seven, eight accidents and just get it done. So it was a yeah. great experience. I, I thoroughly enjoyed it. It was fun. It was nice to have somebody out and be able to talk to them, learn about who they are and why they're involved in the industry. Um, get the info on the products and, and know that if I have questions on products, I don't have to wait on the call center line anymore. I don't have to call the 1-800 number. I have his cell phone number. I can call him directly anytime. There, it, yeah. it, this isn't just like know your reps so that you can get a custom warranty or, or like you're going to get so much more, you know, so it, much it, more. It, it's yeah. all, it, you already said it. Yeah. It was all building that relationships. That, yeah, and that was just one, you know, a couple examples. I mean, the examples and the the ways you improve your business just go on and on. Um, just say, hey, what, can, you know, here's how I run my business. What can you help me with? And, and that's their job, mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. You know, they want your business. So that they do. I mean, look, I know you've talked about it, and I think it's amazing that you were able to go to Disneyland because Schluter put you up in a hotel. Because that yeah. wasn't your local area, so you're able to travel, get a free hotel, and go to Disneyland. Yeah. <laughs> but you also yeah. were able to take the Schluter class. Look, yeah, they're not know. they're not doing that because they want to educate you. I mean, they do. Don't get me wrong, but it's sure. a sales tactic. It's marketing for them. They write it off as a business expense. They sure. want your money, but yeah, oh, definitely. You're still both sides are going to gain something out of it. You learn how to use products and the more products you have available to you, the better business you can run. Yeah, I mean it's it's a it's a great marketing tactic and something we can all take note of and learn from. And they they uh, they make sure that the experience is 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 uh, pleasant for everybody who attends and um, it's a great it's a great thing they've done for the industry. Um, a lot of a lot of people are improving the way they install, you know, install tile and, and showers and stuff. Yeah. And I mean, uh, so uh, who else is out there? I mean, I, every company is going to have something like get on. Sure. Get on the email yeah. list from your distributors and see who's coming through. Um, just that that way you're going to be able to meet more reps. Get the app if, if they yeah. have one. Download that. See a lot of times you can search who your local rep is. Heck, just call them up if you can't find any info online. Some of them don't have the the search function to find out who your local rep is. Just call them and ask. They'll tell you. And then yeah. you get their number directly. Set up a meeting when you have a Tuesday afternoon off and go hang out. Um, and the other thing I would do if I had a bunch of time on my hands right now is I would start, um, you know, like LinkedIn is, is great for B2B. Uh, even Instagram, you can you can find and message local businesses like architects. You can find, yeah. um, you know, designers, all these people, and you can start educating them. See, once you become the expert, once you know your reps, you go to trade shows, you're educating yourself on the on the online world, the, the Facebook groups, you're, you're becoming the expert. And, and then you, it's your job to educate your potential clients, of course, but it's also your job to actually go and impress impress an architect, impress a, 
a, a GC, impress a, a designer with your knowledge and, and provide, again, provide them a solution to their problems. Um, and, and once you do that, it was like, well, Schluter is a great example. Uh, my friend Ryan, he's like fourth generation tile guy in Southern California and they, you know, mud, mud work, floating, floating walls and stuff. Okay. That's all they know. But I, he was getting curious about the Schluter business. So we went to a class. Well, like literally like three weeks after the class, one of his GCs that had been using, um, you know, him and his father's company for, for a long time called him and he said, look, I've got a problem. A, a customer wants a, a curbless shower for their wheelchair, but I can't jackhammer the floor because uh, it's got um, tension cables. Yeah. And Ryan said, well, I've got a solution. I just went to this class. And, and the guy said, you do? You can you can make this happen? Do you know how awesome that was for my buddy Ryan to actually provide a solution for that GC? And it, it's funny because Ryan is like, I don't know if I'm going to be able to talk my GCs into using the Schluter business. <laughs> well, right away he provided a, a solution and, and now he's, he's, you know, using all lightweight materials. Yeah. Uh, you never know why, why limit yourself? You, yeah. Go look at your tool bucket. Yeah. How many tools do you have in that stupid bucket that sit there and you use once a week, once a month, <laughs> but yeah. you got them. Why wouldn't yeah. you want more tools in your bucket? Go learn yeah. something. It, it's so funny when guys fight education. It, it just, it cracks me up. And all care. you gotta do is like point them to a product. Like if you want to use a new product, like let's say you wanted to get into, uh, you know, two CM porcelain, you know, tiles that you know with the floating system, the pedestal system. Like let's say you wanted to start getting into that, but it, it's not in your area. Just start like emailing and and p private messaging architects and saying, hey, have you have you seen this? I offer this service now, and show them a YouTube video or, or whatever. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know. Yeah, that's well, and that's a it. good way to to drum up business. You know, you're hey, have you, you you're not even trying to sell. You're just offering them like, hey, look, this is cool. This is something you can offer your clients. I'm able to do it. Yeah. So I, I, I like that approach. And that right now you have a lot of people have a lot of time. This is the time. Yeah. You, you don't need to be sitting on the couch feeling sorry for yourself. You need to be out there trying to get ahead of the game. Yeah. I, well, the business, you know, yeah, the business is, is so, so much mental preparation and, and office work like we established. And, um, and that's it. That's it. Just get ahead of the game, be ahead of the curve. And, um, a lot of these solutions, um, people are, are actually at home researching, you know, YouTube, some, a lot of people, these home depots and stuff like that have been, uh, flooded with homeowners recently because they're doing all their, their DIY projects. Well, oh, yeah. guess what? Half of them are going to need them redone by a professional. <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, it, it, it's funny. You're, you're right. There's people have nothing but time and they're, they're spending money. I had more inquiries on a, on a recent Facebook ad that I did. I don't pay for advertising. I just put a, I make a post on my business page and then I post it to about 60 community groups every week. Yeah. And that's what's driven. That's what I've built my business on is free advertising through Facebook community groups. Um, I've had more inquiries on that on that post recently than I think I've ever gotten in one day. I had like 15, 16 people reach out to me saying, hey, I really like that. How much does that cost? And it was just a set of stairs done in laminate. It wasn't anything fancy. It doesn't it's not the most spectacular job I've ever done. People have been stuck in their homes, man. They're they're looking at their dingy carpet, their 20 year old tile, their molding shower. They're sick of looking at it. They're, yeah. they're not used to seeing it this much. So yeah, exactly. if you think that we're going to come out of this and that people aren't going to be wanting to spend money, because even though you're having to buy fast food a little bit more right now, probably because you don't want to cook as much and things like that. I bet you that people that are at least like essential workers for sure, they're not able to spend their money. They're too busy. So they're going to have some extra cash from all the extra hours they're putting in. Some people have been staying at home and still being able to work and they're not able to go out and go to the movies and spend their money the way they usually would. There's going to yeah. be some extra cash built up on the other side of this. What are you yeah. doing to get in front of that and be the one that they want to spend it with? Exactly. That's a great point. So, all right. What else, what else can we take? What else did you learn in, in, in 2008, 2009 that we can kind of, 
be investing our time in right now to uh like i said we just we we want to be on the on the front edge of this when there's when that wave comes out we want to be on that rising tide of it and and get lifted with it instead of being crushed underneath it yeah i i mean i think we've covered a uh, quite a bit you know marketing sales um you know positioning position yourself as as a person who can you know uh, you know, start to start to network locally so that what it, you can um, you can acquire you know help mm-hmm. as soon as you need it, and uh, you know you you should be the go to guy. Like if somebody needs an electrician, boom, you know exactly who they should call, and you know that they will have a good experience. Somebody needs a plumber, somebody needs you know whatever, construction related or not, a real a realtor. All those relationships, you're not just making them to get you're, you're making them to share with potential you know whoever friends um, clients people on the street that you meet people in local facebook groups that ask about anything and if you're if you're the go-to guy that has the answers all of a sudden you know you're you're a trusted source you want people to know like and trust you that's that's it it goes back to the beginning you want a client yeah. you want to be that trusted advisor you want them to come yeah. back to you for everything when they want that electrician i don't care if you do tile and that's all you do you know the best electrician in town that's going to give them the yeah. same experience that you gave them, and this is uh, you, if you do that, why aren't they going to come back to you for everything? And then they're going to tell their friend, this guy, this is the guy. I don't care what you yeah. need, call him up and ask him because he has the solution. And 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 stay in contact with people. Um, you should have an email list of, of everybody and phone numbers and even a physical. You you really should have a physical address of everybody keep all that um if you don't have a good crm system you know i mean use an excel spreadsheet use some sort of system to where within a few clicks of the button you can get somebody's address and you can mail them a thank you card you can mail them a happy you know anniversary card whatever the case might be i mean you can you can twist it however you want Mm -hmm. but try to stay in touch with people um, especially right now like Right now, it would be a great time to stay in touch with people and say, hey, look, you know, I, I hope you and your family are safe. I was thinking about you the other day. I mean, a lot of these automated mail systems like like MailChimp, if you don't know, like you can mail, I think, up to like uh, a thousand people for free okay. all at once. And you, you can create an email. You can just write out, type out this email. And, and it, once you input their email, their name and their It'll auto. You can send like a thousand emails at once, and the the system, like Mailchimp or whatever, it will auto populate their first name in the beginning. So you're not you're not actually writing a thousand emails. You're you're writing one email template template, and you're sending it out to a thousand people or, or whatever. However, you know, send it to your best customers. Don't send it to people who don't like you. <laughs> but <laughs> but uh, you're sending this thing out, and and it auto populates their first name. You have a message. You say hey. I, I was thinking about you the other day, you know, and during these tough times, I hope you and your family are safe. If, if, especially if you have an older audience or an older client base, say, if you need anything, let me know. I've got some time on my hands. I'm, I'm happy to run to the store for medication or whatever you might need. And then say, by the way, we're, you know, we're still here. We're still in business. Um, we, you know, give them your status. We are working. We're not working, but we're ready to work as soon as, you know, we, yeah. get, we get restrictions lifted, whatever the case is stay in contact with these people and that should really be a, a quarterly thing you're doing anyways uh, but right now would be a great time to start if you're not already because what happens is um, your past clients are your best lead lead source of work and everybody knows that everybody wants to create a referral based business why because that that's so powerful if someone refers you you you've got you know a 99 percent chance of landing that client um, and so what happens is uh People forget about you. Uh, they lose your business card. That you know your magnet on the fridge gets lost. They know they they liked their last flooring guy, but they can't for the life of them remember who it is. I've seen it time and time again. I've had clients say we love our last tile guy, and I say, well, why why aren't you calling him? Oh, it, I can't remember who it was. Yeah, I just can't. And so they're they're searching. So, but guess what? You you auto populate an email every quarter, every three four months, and. Even if they don't open it, they're going to see your name in the subject line, and they're they're not going to be annoyed. They can unsubscribe by hitting an unsubscribe button if they want, but they're not going to be annoyed. They're just going to delete it, but they're going to know you're still in business and you're a professional person who puts content out. 
that's it. You know, and that's go. We, I mean, we've had Ken Ballen on here a couple of times. He was just on your show and he was talking branding versus, versus advertising yeah. and, and marketing. And that's, that's what you're talking about is that that's branding and, and marketing. That's not advertising. That's staying top of mind with people. And that's yeah. what matters yeah. is when they, the minute what you want is anytime somebody hears that keyword floor or shower, whatever it is for what you're doing, you're the first person they think of. And they immediately tell their friend, I know a guy, he's amazing. He's wonderful. I he just did saw his email. Yeah, yeah. I just, whatever it is, like, <clears throat> you know, oh, I got his magnet on my fridge. Like you, you got to find ways to stay top of mind with people and, and be yeah. that first thing that comes up when they hear that, that trigger word. So I think that's, and, that's great and, advice. And physical mailers are actually, um, people who are using them in 2020 are actually seeing great success and, and, and people laugh and say, well, nobody, you know, the fact of the matter is nobody actually gets personalized mail we get junk mail and we throw it away. So if some, you can get um, these companies online again to mass mail, like handwritten notes, they're not actually handwritten, but yeah, they're yeah. typewriters that makes it look like a handwritten envelope. And, and again, it'll auto populate them and, and it'll go to your best customers once a year, you know, whatever it is, it costs you, you know, two bucks a customer. I mean, that's a good investment. And, and you can do uh, you uh, United States postal service has a, uh, every door mailer for like 20, 30 cents, you can pick zip codes and neighborhoods that you want to work in and, and start mailing these every door mailers. And what will happen is people are just going to throw them away, but they are seeing your name over and over again. So that's another great technique. No, you know what? And you're not the first guy I've heard say that. Um, handwritten notes are, are huge. Um, if you're man i i hear guys and i it's one of these things i you know you tell yourself i need to start it i need to start it and i haven't done it after every job if you send out a handwritten thank you note to your client for that job it's going to yeah. go over so big with them um but you're right people don't get handwritten notes anymore so doing those mailers that like fake being a handwritten note people will actually open them cuz they think they got personal mail and they get excited yeah. about it every yeah. Man, think about it. Like you, you used to be excited when you'd hop online and AOL would yell at you. You've got mail, right? Right. You know? Exactly. Now yep. you check your inbox and you're like, oh my god, 132 messages. I hate all this spam. Yeah. Your mailbox has less in it, and you get excited when your aunt sends you that that birthday card. Like my kids get so excited when grandma's card comes through. Oh man, what did I? What happened here? Oh jeez, I, I broke it. I think I fixed it. All right. I apologize, guys. Guys, I hit my phone screen and I put them on speakerphone. So we're real professional around here. You're back, right, Luke? No? What happened here? I put you on mute. I think you're back now, right? Yeah, I'm back. Okay. <laughs> I'm sorry. I, I put you on speakerphone. I hit my mute button. I got oh, all kinds of right. nonsense going on on my phone. Um, I put it in a new location these past couple episodes, and it, it's apparently not working out. Okay. Um, but no, like the, the handwritten notes, they're going to go over huge. My kids get so excited when, when Nana sends them their Easter card. Like that just came. And of course, they're excited because they know they're getting cash. But yeah. they see that there's a handwritten note. Like my son knew at the age of three when we would go and get the mail, here's this stack of junk that comes. And then dad gripes about the bills. Yeah. But yeah. Nana sends a, a letter and everyone's excited. So, yeah. like, it, it, man, it, it's a great marketing technique to, to get yourself out there, let people see you. If you can customize those zip codes, you can get into those neighborhoods where you think nobody's ever going to deal with you. Go get in those high end neighborhoods because you can custom pick them. Yeah. So, no, that is all that is all wonderful advice. Um what do you think? Here's something that I haven't been able to figure out. Um, a lot of my floors are, are one time install. There's no like maintenance stuff, you know, where like with a, a shower or a floor, you could offer to like come out and reseal it as a tile guy or a carpet guy. Maybe you've got like a carpet cleaning buddy that you've partnered up with and you can recommend his services and he's going to give you like 5% of all your clients that use them. Like you can yeah. you can make returning revenue streams for yourself a little bit with some of the other yeah, types yeah. of flooring. 
what are you what are you doing to what did you have anything like that going on that you were advertising and and running like email campaigns for um i guess short answer no (laughs) okay no would you do that if you got back into it i would i would um i would offer you know maintenance services um for sure like with tile and showers you know maintenance services are, are huge and um I would offer, you know, uh, an annual service maybe as part of the package. You know, that that could be an upsell. So say you sell a shower and uh, you have options, you know, sell it. Uh, Dan Welch uh, gave this presentation at uh, at, um, an event every year they have uh, called TSP, Total Solutions Plus. Okay. Dan Welch said he started selling his tile jobs like car dealers sell cars. They don't just sell the car. They sell you all kinds of upgrades, and all kinds of custom options because it's a custom product. Mm-hmm. And so whatever you're doing, flooring, uh, you know, carpet, uh, you know, showers, try to start to think of custom ways you can upsell. Hey, you know, for, for, for $2.99, for $3.99, we offer an annual maintenance package where we, we're going to come here and spend two hours and maintain this. We're going to replace the caulking. We're going to... You know, we're going to do this. We're going to do that. You know, whatever it is. And all of a sudden you made 300 bucks on that sale. Those folks are going to, you know, a lot of them will use you. And that's great because you're getting in front of them. You send your apprentice or whatever to go do the job. Um, You're getting in front of them. You're staying top of mind. A a good percentage of those people won't call you back for that maintenance problem. Now you should be staying in contact with them and saying, oh, it's it's about that time of year again. Can can we come do it? Some of them might say, oh, it's it's okay. We've got to handle or something like that, but it's really in your best interest if you go if you go handle it because you're going to keep that job looking better longer. You know, it's at another touch point. You know, you want as many touch points, but really, it's it's all about giving them options because some people will really and truly appreciate that you're giving them more options than the other. Um, everybody's going to get three bids, so if you're giving them more custom options, um, even if they don't go with them, they're just like, wow, this guy's really got it together. He knows his products, you know. Yeah, I, I the same book that I read that that client versus customer definition in they talked about Olympic pricing, and yeah. so in it, it's written by a hardwood floor guy, and so he would offer you know f- you can do it in multiple areas with that, and so once they picked you know I want maple, okay, well do you want like really rustic looking maple? Do you want kind of like rustic yeah. looking maple or do you want crystal clean grade beautiful hardwood so yeah. you can have your bronze silver and gold on the installation side and then you get to the finish side and you can say okay we have this finish that's like okay it's going to be great it'll work for your family here's something that's a little bit more and here's like top of the line more often than not people will automatically upgrade to that silver level cuz they don't want the bottom level, right? But it'll surprise you if you can write these these estimates up enough. How often people will upgrade to the gold, and anything that's in that gold tier is going to have your higher profit margins, and you're going to earn a lot more money on them. And once you work out the template for these estimates, because this guy was doing like seven page estimates, it was crazy. <laughs> Yeah. Um, but it was a template that was like designed over time. And then all he had to do was go through and plug in exactly what it was. And it can't, you know, it just spits out the numbers and stuff because it's an Excel spreadsheet or whatever it is. Um, so don't, it, it's the same thing. You know, if you're offering that maintenance pa- package at the end, if you can find different ways to offer options in of how people are going to buy things and different products you can use. You know, maybe a, a cheaper thin set will do the job, but you can offer a better warranty if they upgrade to, you know, XYZ thin set. And it only costs you $10 more a bag, but you can charge them $50 a bag. Yeah. Who knows? You got to, once again, you got to well, know your numbers. It's the value, you know, and, and it's not your, it's not your job as the business owner to dictate what people do and do not value. For instance, there's a great illustration, a real life situation that I, I heard some years ago, and I, I just remembered it now. Um, the average uh, sales point at Starbucks is like, you know, five ninety nine, six ninety nine, dollars something like that. People buy a coffee in a bar or whatever. You know what I mean? Yeah. So, but they have cheaper options. They have, you know, you can get a coffee probably for like, you know, two ninety nine dollars or something, three ninety nine, dollars depending on where you're at. But 
they also have more expensive options. They have some astronomical expensive items. They've got a, uh, an espresso machine in, in Starbucks for like 2500 bucks. Now, who's going to go to Starbucks and buy a $2,500 machine, you ask? Well, uh, I don't know anybody who, who did or has, but people do. And that's why they sell it. That's why it's in there, because they know that for every 500 people or, you know, whatever. I'm, I'm, but let's say that like Starbucks really does know the numbers. And, and I wish I knew the numbers. But <laughs> in, in the story I heard a few years ago, it was like it was like this. Every 500 people that walk into a Starbucks are going to leave with a $2,000 espresso machine. That's ridiculous. So you have, you have to start thinking about your business like that. Like every hundred customers is going to spend, tr you know, quadruple or, or five times or 10 times what my average customer sells. So if you're, if your average customer is spending five K with you, every, every 50 customers is going to spend, you know, 15 K 20 K yeah. whatever the case is. And you need to, it, it's not just about the, it's not just about the volume. You know, it's not about the volume. It's about what they value. They might value your gold package that you only sell twice a year. Mm -hmm. You only sell it twice a year and it doesn't take you any longer. And it's no sweat off your back because you know, your products and your reps and all that you sell it twice a year and you, and you are profitable and there's no shame in being profitable. It's, it's, it's a business needs money to survive. So, and that's it. Like, that, that, that's exactly it. Why you didn't start your business to not be profitable. Yeah. Why, why, why are you in business to like, just get by? If you want to do that, go back to working for the man and, and, and have your, taxes taken out place. of your check. Like it's not your place to dictate, you know, what people are going to spend on, on, you know, people are going to spend money in all kinds of crazy ways. How many of us have thousand dollar iPhones? I mean, how stupid is that? that and yes. yet it's something we're all doing. And yet people are installing backsplashes for like 500 bucks. And they're saying, well, if you charge more than 500 bucks, you're ripping your customer off. Who says? Who says? Correct. Not if they're willing to pay it. That's their choice, not mine. And, yeah. and here, we'll, we'll circle. We'll go full circle. We'll go all the way back to the beginning. Yeah. Just because you can't afford your own services doesn't mean they're not worth it. Get that head yeah. trash out of there. I couldn't yeah. afford my services when I started. I can now afford to buy a floor for myself after two years. That doesn't mean I'm going to do it. You know, obviously I'll do the work myself and I, I have yeah. started that. And my house is still ripped up and I'm waiting on back ordered sure. <laughs> stair noses and it's a darn mess. And the pop, the cobbler's kids have no shoes, but yeah, Hey, yeah. <laughs> get that, get that, get out of that mind game. I don't yeah. care if you can't afford your own services. That doesn't mean that you shouldn't be charging more. It, it, that's absolutely insane to me to sit there and be like, oh, 250 a square foot for a floating floor is a ripoff. It's not, you can't charge that much. Says who? Yeah. Who's, who's, this, why is a dollar a good amount? Like, where'd you come up with that number? I know how long it takes me and what I want to make. So, and, and, and the more, the more you ch can charge, you can service your clients better. You don't have to run around, you don't have to work you know, seven days a week to just barely stay afloat. You can all of a sudden be working four days a week, but somebody calls you from a year ago and says, Hey, some, you know, we just dropped, we just dropped a, a fridge. We were trying to move and uh, my daughter's birthday is this weekend and we really want this floor repaired. Yes, ma'am. I'll be right over. I've yeah. got, you know, I have the ability to do that or I'll send somebody, you know, because I, I'm profitable. I'm in my, I'm running my business. My business is not dictating my life, you know, and, and the way I do things. And that's why you can, you know, that's why you charge a lot. That's why you charge a lot because you want premium clients who expect a premium service. There it is. That that's that's what everybody should be after. Get get to the top. Stop yeah. dealing with the people that are nickel and diming you and negotiating you. Look, I'll negotiate everything, but that's because <laughs> I look that. Why not? OK, I'll go into McDonald's and tell them I'm going to I only want to pay 59 cents for a burger still because I'm stuck <laughs> in 1996. <laughs> They're going to tell me no. But oh, well, maybe they tell me they'll take nine cents off and I only got to pay like a dollar a dollar this time. Who knows? There you go. But there you go. don't get into the people that want to pay. You know, they may want to negotiate because everyone wants to feel good about what they're getting. But that doesn't mean that when you tell them, no, you can't do it because 
X, Y, and Z, and you know what it costs to run your business, that they're not going to agree to that and say, all right, I respect that. Let's do this. It, you know, when you're getting into those people where they do only want to pay you a dollar a square foot to do something, because look, I know there's guys taking tile out for a dollar a square foot. I know there's guys installing tile for a dollar a square foot, carpet for a buck 35 a yard, just ridiculously low rates. And you're slaving yeah. away. Stop. Yeah. Go find someone that respects you for you and the hard work you're putting in. Go deal yeah. with those people. The other people can catch up with the rest of society. <laughs> um, you got any other like real quick tidbits or anything, Luke? Oh, uh, I think I, you know what I think. I think that's most of it. Um, How about a book? What a, one book? Uh, let let me pull it up here. It's an audible book. I don't want to get the title wrong. Okay. I mean, I mean, it's a book, but you can also <laughs> listen to it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, it's got to be Audible. newer if you're just if you and not in your collection for very long if you're looking it up. Uh, selling in tough times. Oh, is that that's selling. the one Ron Nash just put out, right? Yeah, that he was Tom recommended. Hopkins. Okay. Yeah, it's a great book. Selling in tough times. Uh, Tom Hopkins is is the uh, is the author author I should say, and then um, and then high performance ha- ha- habits. By Ooh, Brendan. Got, yeah. Okay. Uh, I got that one on my phone. I got to do that one. All right. So, uh, and then, well, I, I don't know. When is this one coming out? This, um, we're in April. This one will probably be coming out in May. I don't know what book I'm going to do for the May book club. I haven't decided yet. Um, currently we're, we're in April when we're recording this and we're doing, uh, the ultimate sales machine by Chet Holmes. So okay. that's, uh, Hop in the hop in the group. Get in the tile money group. Get in the get in the floor education group. Get in do something. Go go find something to join. Um, what do you want to plug, Luke? Go ahead and get your plugs in there. Uh, is, it, is this coming out early May? You said yes. I believe this is going to be. It might be end of April, if not like first week of early May. May. What, I, so twenty ninth. I, I think April twenty ninth. That's. Oh, great. So, so check out, um, tilestone virtual trade show.com May 18th through the 20th. I am hosting, uh, the first ever virtual tile trade show. So it's going to be really cool. There's going to be uh, a lot of sponsors. Manufacturers have, uh, booths when you can go and network and we're going to have some pre-recorded videos, some, some learning opportunities, some panel discussions, it's going to be a lot of fun. We're, we're looking to have some fun and educate people. So tilestone virtual trade show.com. Um, and, uh, the next six Fridays we're having, um, the tile nation sessions. It's okay. a runner up to the event. It's three hours every Friday, two o'clock to five o'clock, uh, Eastern time. And we're having some shorter interviews. We're having four interviews and we're having, uh, about two hours of, of networking opportunities in between the interviews. So, um, that's a fun event. We already had our first one here yesterday and we, we had a good amount of people in there and we had some great interviews. Um, and we had a blast. Everybody just had a blast getting to know each other. Who, who'd you have? You had Shannon on, right? Yeah, we had Shannon Huffstickler. Uh, we had Ron Nash. We had Mike Whalen out of New York and we had, uh, uh, Joe Macaluso, which is out of, out of Jersey, out of Northern Jersey. Okay. And they can catch that on, uh, you, you posted it up on your YouTube. Yep, you can catch those reruns on on Tile Money YouTube okay. and uh, watch those interviews. Um, and and that, yeah, they're they're about fifteen to twenty minutes each. Okay, and where do I get the the link for the Friday if I want to catch it live? Uh, go to the Tile Nation dot com. The Tile Nation dot com. Yeah. Okay. Awesome. If if people want to reach out to you and get, and get help, where do we where do we reach you? Uh, on Instagram at Tile Money, uh, Facebook group Tile Money, um, everything Tile Money, TileMoney dot com <laughs> for phone numbers. Uh, my my cell phone is area code eight three one five eight eight zero four one seven. You can email me Luke at TileMoney dot com, and I'd love to hear from you. Awesome, man. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you for everything you're doing. It's been great meeting you and getting to know you. It's been great trying to schedule this thing, although frustrating, um, but that's that's how it goes. So 
Uh, actually, I think it ended up working out for the best, and this was a really good time to. It it was meant to be. You know, it was just a cool, good time cool. to use your experiences to be able to help further other people in this industry. So. Thank you for spending time with us and everything you're doing. Guys, go tile money. Just I don't care that it says tile. You are going to learn something. The events that he's putting on, go hop in them. I I don't touch the stuff, but I I went and I'm going to go if I have some free time and I'm not busy on a job because being on the West Coast time and Eastern stuff, it doesn't line up right. But I'll do my best to try. Like there's nothing wrong with getting to know other people so that you can continue to educate yourself. You don't have to just stick to what you know. Go get educated elsewhere because, like we said, you want to be that trusted advisor for your client. So, Luke, once again, thank you. We will have to do it again. And uh, For sure. For sure. Anytime. You know, once again, I I just appreciate it, and I will talk with you later. Sounds good, Kyle. And thank you for for doing everything you're doing for for the flooring tile world. My pleasure. Later. All right. Take, have a good night. Bye-bye. That's all the time we have for this week. To keep the conversation going, head on over to the Floor Education Facebook group. Be sure to subscribe so you can hear each and every episode. We can be found on Apple Podcasts, Stitcher, Spotify, iHeartRadio, and most major podcast directories. Don't forget to leave a review and let us know what you think about the show. If you'd like to be a guest, have questions or feedback, you can email us at flooreducation at gmail.com. You can help support the show by becoming a patron over at patreon.com slash floor education. Remember, your education never stops.